everyone. I'm Dana Perino, and we have a jam-packed show. Who's ready for a bus ride to the White House? Republicans are about to head down Pennsylvania Avenue to celebrate a victory on tax reform with President Trump. We'll bring it to you live. Plus, we'll ask Majority Whip Steve Scalise about avoiding a looming government shutdown. And Senator Cory Gardner tells us what this landmark legislation means for the midterms. Will it give Republicans an edge in 2018? All that and more on The Daily Briefing. It is celebration time at the White House, and I'm now joined by a man who probably get one of the first Christmas cookies they pass out. Republican lawmakers plan to attend taking buses from the, uh, the Capitol to the White House for a tax reform vote victory lap with President Trump, as you just heard Dana talking about, and they are on board those buses. Uh, this is a man who helped deliver the president's major legislative victory on tax reform. Texas Congressman Kevin, chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. You and I have been talking a lot over the last few weeks. You were instrumental in getting this done. How did you do it? Uh, it feels great. And yes, you have been. And thanks for being so engaged in this. Look, you know, I think this is a combination of really great ideas on how to fix this code, listening to the American people carefully about what they want to see in this code. The House and Senate, I think, executing perfectly here. And then presidential leadership, no doubt. President Trump has made a big difference here. So these, these things don't come together but once a generation. And I can't think of a better time, frankly, for the American economy for this to happen. Tell me, uh, as you get to the White House, the first thing that you'll say to this president. We did it. Um, <laughs> and thank you. We did it and thank you because look, we, we stood up and this president stood up to the American people and said, we're going to get you a better, new, fair, simple tax code and we're delivering on that promise. It would not have happened, but for President Trump's leadership, there's no doubt about it. And yes, tremendous work from so many people to get it done. But boy, this is um, come New Year's Day, we're going to have a whole new tax code for America to shake up Washington and sort of shake up this economy as well. Yeah, we're waiting on the simplicity part, the, the, the part where you have the app and the postcard and... Yeah, you know, surprisingly, even though they were, the House bill was, uh, was dr dramatically simple, as you'd imagine, uh, and through the, through the process, we found common ground. But still, uh, they estimate almost 9 out of 10 mm -hmm. Americans will be able to use that simpler postcard-style system, which I think is a good improvement. Congressman Brady, why do you think it took so many years since the last time we saw something like this, 1986? Yeah, it's, it's just incredibly hard. It is the legislative challenge of, of any generation because you're really shaking up you know, a lot of special interests. You're really diving deep into issues that uh, have been entrenched in Washington for a long time. And so I know the skeptics you know, we're probably right in saying, look, this will never get done, certainly won't get done this year. But it is, I, I think the American people who really demand a better tax code, that's what lawmakers uh, wanted to deliver on, certainly for me. Are you concerned at all for those who voted particularly in the House against this? And there were only 12 of them the first go around. I think that number was intact today. Uh, as well, you had um, Lee Zeldin here on the East Coast, on the left coast. You had Representative Issa. You had many others. Uh, what, what do you say to them at this point? Are you concerned that those seats are in jeopardy? Well, look, uh, these are very good lawmakers. Uh, they worked hard to try to improve this uh, for, their, uh, for their districts. I know I'm also very proud of lawmakers from California, Illinois, Minnesota, New York, and others who fought to increase the state and local deduction here to lower that top rate. Really important for families in those uh, state and local or those salt states. And so, look, everyone's made a contribution here. Uh, that's why we're, we're going to be, this president's going to be signing this bill very soon. All right. Well, I, we're watching two things. We're watching the White House, which is where the buses are going, and we're watching the buses load up. What is the mood? Now, I had Senator Thune on, and he was a little subdued, but I think as you get closer to the, the victory lap, maybe it changes. I think that's the case. Look, they stayed up late to deliver this. That's so, true. Uh, good for them. Good for them. In the House, look, we are jubilant to deliver on this promise. In fact, I've got to catch one of those buses to make sure I can get down the White House with the president. Well, I know that that's true, and we appreciate your time. Before I let you go, uh, you know, as you look forward, the next thing is going to be spending in the government. And, and I understand that there's a stopgap measure that would push it to January 19th. Talk to me real quickly about what lies ahead. Yeah, so I think it's really important we deliver on our other promises, which is to begin to rebuild our military, create national security here, as well as 
finding a path back toward a balanced budget. Tax reform, I believe, will help us by getting the economy going, but we're going to have to, over time, make tough decisions to restrain spending to get back to where we need to be. So all this, all this is combined to get America into a better financial position. All right. I, I think your bus just pulled into the, into the shot on the right. I got to let you go. <laughs> you may have to. Harris, thank you very much. All right. Congressman Brady, thank you very much. Have fun at the Victory Lap at the White House. Thank we you. appreciate your time. Thanks. All right. So uh, we have a little bit more information about what this was like. We, we know that some of the lawmakers on Capitol Hill left the Capitol Hill site to go to smaller areas, smaller meetings, I should say, off-site of Capitol Hill to talk about this over the last three or four months or so that they have been negotiating. How do you get to something that you can put on the president's desk? And so they had to make it bite-sized almost, uh, take those conversations small to get it done. The Senate was always the wild card. There were always those members, we didn't know how they were going to vote, and then you had a pop-up no from Senator Marco Rubio down in Florida saying, no, you're not doing enough for the middle class and the poor. we got to take another look, another bite at the apple with that uh, child credit. And then you heard the president talk about that child credit in specificity today, saying it had doubled. One of the things that he considers makes this uh, the right type of legislation for the American people. But right now, part of that Make America agenda, Make America Great Again agenda that the president had talked about, he's going to get to talk about that with the lawmakers who've helped him put that into motion, if you will, today. Tax cuts, Jobs Act, voted yes, now it heads to his desk. I'm Harris. Here's Dana. A Fox News alert. Lawmakers heading to the White House right now as President Trump plans to celebrate a big victory on tax reform. Final passage in the House came today after it cleared the Senate with a 51 to 48 party line vote overnight. Hello, everyone. I'm Dana Perino, and this is The Daily Briefing. Buses are standing by to take Republican lawmakers to the White House for an event marking the president's first major piece of legislation. We have Team Fox coverage. Chief White House correspondent John Roberts is standing by. But first, let's just go to Peter Ducey on Capitol Hill, where the Republican congressional delegation is about to depart. And I'm wondering, Peter, if you'll be running behind trying to get the interview as you tried yesterday. <laughs> I don't know if the Capitol Police would really be that happy if I tried to do that, Dana, but we have been watching. There are staffers standing with what looks like an RSVP list, checking names off of it as these lawmakers walk onto these buses that are parked right at the steps of the House chamber where they just went in and for the second day in a row voted on this tax proposal, and they were able to pass it with Republican votes only. So here's a look at what will be the law of the land, the transformed tax code, once President Trump signs it. The corporate tax rate gets a big cut from 35% to 21%. Anybody making between $49,000 and $86,000 gets an average cut of $930. Anybody making $86,000 to $149,000 gets an average cut of $1,800. A lot of these cuts do go away in 2026 unless a future Congress decides that they want to extend them. And then, of course, SALT write-offs decrease. Those are the state and local taxes uh, that now can only be deducted for $10,000 under this new plan. That is the reason why a lot of Republicans from high-tax states, New York, New Jersey, California, ended up defecting with the party and not supporting this measure. But it did still pass easily both days. Uh, and I've been looking, Dana... They've got us pushed back a little bit. Uh, we did just see Chairman Brady, who, of course, was huge behind the scenes at getting this plan through, I, but having a hard time getting anybody to come over and talk to us because I don't think they want to be late for the president. No, Dana. well, I, I, I know that firsthand. You never want to be late for the president. You want to be early. <laughs> Let me ask you one thing. Um, so we, we see a lot of the uh, jubilance of the rep of Republicans. And I'm wondering if you've talked to any rep uh, Democrats, um, members of the House, and whether they are feeling frustrated or if they are fired up. They knew that this victory was a possibility, and now they feel like they have something to fight against. They are still fighting against this bill that still has not been signed into law. And a big part of their argument, and we heard this before at a press event with uh, Democratic leadership, they just 
are trying to make the case to the public, who eventually may be voting based on whether or not they like this tax plan or not, if it ends up being the big legislative accomplishment of this Congress, uh, they're making the argument that it's only good for rich people. Listen to this. So what we're doing here today is basically saying, wealthy Americans, big fat Christmas present for you. Tiny Tim, we're taking your crutch away from you and all the other kids in this country. And we're putting a lump of coal into your Christmas stocking. So that was a Christmas specific attack on the Republican tax plan. But again, Democrats not able to stop it either day that they voted on it. Dana. All right, Peter Ducey, thank you so much. We'll check back in with you. And but right now at the White House, they're setting up for a victory celebration. And Chief White House correspondent John Roberts is live on the North Lawn. And it looks like the weather cooperated, too. Dana, it's a beautiful day. I mean, there's a little bit of a cool breeze coming here across the North Lawn of the White House. But other than that, the sun is shining and it will be good for a South Lawn event. A little less than an hour from now as the president is going to welcome dozens of Republican members of Congress over here to the White House for a victory lap celebration given today's successful vote in the House following successful votes in the House and the Senate yesterday. Uh, the president said he would have liked to have had Democrats over, but since none of them voted for the bill, it's limited only to Republicans. The president talking about this at length in the cabinet room and what will be his last cabinet meeting of 2017. Uh, the president also revealing a little known fact about Obamacare in this bill. Of course, this bill repeals the tax penalty involved in the, internet, in the uh, individual mandate uh, in Obamacare. The president saying just a little while ago that this effectively repeals Obamacare and that he didn't really want members of Congress talking about that aspect of the bill. Listen to what he said here. Obamacare has been repealed in this bill. We didn't want to bring it up. I told people specifically, be quiet with the fake news media because I don't want them talking too much about it because I didn't know how people would. But now that it's approved, I can say the individual mandate on health care where you had to pay not to have insurance. Okay, think of that one. You pay not to have insurance. The individual mandate has been repealed. The president also pointed to a section of the bill that opens up a portion of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge to oil drilling. This is something, and Dana, you're intimately familiar with this, the Bush administration wanted to do, but ran into a firestorm of criticism. Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski asked for and got a provision to open up a small section of Anwar. Here's the president on that. We're going to start drilling in Anwar, one of the largest oil reserves in the world. We did that at the request of the two great senators from the state of Alaska, which is a very special place. But I will tell you, Anwar is a big, big deal. It's not ever mentioned by the press, and that was fine until now. Now you can mention it. So here's the timetable going forward. This afternoon, we have got that celebration on the South Lawn of the White House, where the president will welcome all those Republican members of Congress. will be enrolled and sent to President Trump. That might might happen by Friday afternoon, might take another day or two after that. Then there is a White House review. We don't know how long this will take, but at least a couple of days. Then the uh, bill will go to the president to sign it. I'm told at this point it's likely that he'll sign it next week. Don't know if it will be in Mar-a-Lago, if there are a hold event, an event somewhere else. And then a post-signing event back here in Washington, D.C., the first week of January. Some of the timing, Dana, is going to depend on what happens with the deal to keep the government open with the spending bill. The White House is fully confident it will get a continuing resolution that will keep the government funded through January the 19th. And as part of that spending bill, they will get waivers to what's called pay-go. Uh, just a brief uh, outline here. Pay-go demands that if you cut taxes, the cost of those tax cuts is paid for by cutting entitlements like Medicare and, and other benefits like that. But mm -hmm. Congress typically waives those pay-go aspects. But Democrats are making noise that they're not going to issue waivers. So if they don't get those waivers in a spending bill, that might push the signing of this to 2018, because if the president signs it this year, those pay-go right. cuts would kick in in 2018. But if he doesn't sign it until the first of the year, those pay-go cuts would be delayed until 2019. It's a little complicated, but the president hopes to sign it before the end of the year. Well, yeah. if you want to learn about pay-go, this is the show, because Senator Scott tried to explain it to us yesterday, too, and we're, we're, <laughs> we're catching on. I think we are. Your head, your head's still spinning? <laughs> a little bit. John Roberts, thank you so much. All right, thank you.
My next guest is about to board a bus to the White House where President Trump will welcome Republican lawmakers who passed his tax bill. Joining us now is House Majority Whip Steve Scalise. I should offer you congratulations, sir. What do you think the difference Thanks. is between where President Trump and the House Republicans started last January in a relationship that seemed fairly tense and then going through all of the seasons to at the end of the year actually being able to celebrate this victory today? Well, you know, we've been working very closely with President Trump throughout this process. You know, he made it very clear from the beginning. He wants to make sure that middle class families see real tax relief. And under this bill, they will get it in a big way. Uh, you're going to see the economy take off like nothing we've seen in a generation. You're already seeing the stock market respond positively just on the assumption that the bill would have gotten passed. Now that it is passed and then the president will sign it shortly, uh, you're going to see companies hire. You're going to see wages go up. You're going to see economic growth, which equates to to more jobs and more money in the pockets of families. And they know how to spend it a lot better than a lot of these liberal Washington elites that are just so upset right now that we passed a bill that cuts taxes for working families. I, I know that you all were under a lot of pressure from uh, uh, companies that wanted this corporate tax rate cut, which this is not something that um, even and I, a lot of Democrats wanted and understood that the corporate tax rate was just not right and making us very uncompetitive throughout the world. But if those benefits in terms of job growth or wage increases don't come, will you put pressure back on them, uh, those corporations who are going to benefit from this? Well, first of all, if you believe in economic growth and if you believe in free markets uh, and you believe in, in the kind of economy that we're seeing already take off, uh, you're going to see a lot of those companies bring those jobs back to America. But you know this real well, Dana, uh, because America has the highest corporate tax rate mm -hmm. in the industrialized world, it's literally killed jobs where we would see big company after big company move thousands mm -hmm. of good jobs out of the country just mm -hmm. for that reason. We end that in this bill. We actually cut the rate down to where we can be the leader of the world again. And then you're going to see new manufacturing plants be built in America instead of being built in foreign countries. And that means really good jobs for people. And, and people get that. People see these companies moving jobs overseas, and they knew why, and they were calling on Congress to fix it. Democrats tried to stand in the way, but we weren't going to be denied uh, that opportunity for those families that want these jobs. We passed the bill, and it's going to be really good for the economy and really good for middle-class families. I know there were 12 Republicans who uh, voted no uh, on the bill. These are House Republicans, mostly in states where they, were, they're, they think their constituents will see tax increases, or they're just not happy with the bill. So Democrats feel like they've got the wind at their back. They think there's a wave election coming. And I actually heard somebody say to me uh, this morning that they think it's possible that those 12 seats are actually quite vulnerable for Republicans and they're going to target them and that gets them halfway to taking back the majority. What do you think of that? Well, they've been saying that for the last three cycles. We know it's going to be a tough election next year, but the good news is we've got a great bill that's going to really jolt the economy. And when people see their paychecks going up, when people see unemployment dropping and people going back to work, uh, that's going to be something that the Democrats opposed every step of the way. And, and if you just look at Obamacare, you know, they, they lost their, their majority in part because of Obamacare because they raised taxes on family mm -hmm. and they had more government control telling you what you can or can't buy and what you have to buy. Uh, in our bill, we actually go back to free markets. We cut taxes. We go in the opposite direction. And that's what families have been calling for for years, saying, look, just get the economy back on track so that we have confidence that we can maybe go and buy a new home or we can add on or put more money in our college savings account for our kids. Yep. They're going to be able to do that now with real money in their pockets because we're getting Washington out of their way and making our country competitive again. That's and what I, people I know that want, the, and we're going to benefit from that because we delivered something important for the American people. I know the Senate can frustrate the House because it's slower, but it is amazing to me, having worked on uh, energy issues back in my previous life for so long, to see Anwar uh, being opened up in this bill absolutely blows me away. And the president talking about it in the cabinet meeting and not being afraid of the kind of backlash that the, he'll get in the media or from environmental groups. Before I right. let you go, can I ask you about the spending bill? Because there's no rest for the weary. You're going to have to start counting votes and how you're going to keep the government funded. I think it's true that nobody really wants a government shutdown, but you have people like Chairman Mac Thornberry saying he doesn't want a short-term measure. He wants to get our military funded. How are you guys going to work this out? 
We're already working on that. And of course, Chairman Thornberry, the speaker's been talking to uh, a lot of uh, his members. We've all been talking to the members of our conference that want to make sure we get something done to get our job done before we leave. And, uh, and it also includes the supplemental spending bill for all of those states affected by hurricanes and wildfires. So we're going to get all of that done. You had mentioned uh, ANWR, Section 1002 of ANWR, which gets opened up under this bill. It's like Prudhoe Bay. I mean, you don't see yeah. caribou running around with people try to pers pursue it as. It's a lot of rich resources that we can actually go and explore for more American energy. President Trump had it right. Uh, this is going to be about energy dominance, where we can finally stop relying on countries that don't like us. We can become energy independent and actually export to other countries and make more money, create more jobs in America. So that's what this bill was about. It's about creating jobs and getting the economy back on track. And I'm proud that uh, we were able to get it passed, and President Trump's going to sign it. And, uh, and look, he's been a champion of this from the very beginning. This is going to be a big win for the president that he will deliver yep. to the American people for Christmas. Well, you know, I don't want to be the one to make you late to the White House, so I'll let you go. Congressman Steve Scalise, thank you so much. Great being back with you, Dana. Take care. Merry okay, Christmas. Bye -bye. Thank you. Republicans about to take a victory lap on taxes. The latest from Capitol Hill as lawmakers head to the White House for a party. Plus, looking ahead to 2020, Chris Starwalt will be here and tell us about Democrats heading to Iowa for the next presidential campaign. Fox News alert, in less than an hour, Republicans are set to hold a news conference at the White House to celebrate passage of the Republican tax plan. Buses standing by on Capitol Hill to take the Republican congressional delegation up to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue or down, however way you look at that. To discuss what we can expect, <laughs> let's bring in Fox News political editor and the editor of Halftime Report, Chris Darwalt. Would you say up or down to the White House? Uh, I would I'd say I would go say, down to the White House. I, I, I would say down, but then again, I'm and you go up to the hill. Madisonian separation of powers kind of guy, so I would say down to the White House, up to the Hill. All right. Um, there was a school of thought that tax reform was going to be much more difficult than health care reform for Republicans to pass, and it turns out not to be the case. What do you think is the major difference between how Republicans started the year, sort of at loggerheads with President Trump and his staff often saying that they were, you know, that those Republicans aren't backing the president's agenda, to today, their final moment in Washington together before the holidays are having a chance to be victorious. Well, part of it is this is a real Rube Goldberg contraption that the Republicans have put together to get the tax cut done and get around all of the rules of the Senate parliamentarian and this, that and the other thing. This thing has got more kinks in it than an old garden hose. And what they're going to have to continue to do as a result of this passage, they're going to have to keep coming back to this legislation over and over. You were, you were talking with John Roberts about if the president signs it, he can't really sign it this year. He really, really actually probably needs to wait next year or it creates this consequence that is automatic cuts to entitlement programs if they do it. So the way that this was easier than Obamacare and to take nothing away from their accomplishment, this is a great big day for Republicans. This is a day that they wanted and needed. This is their success. So I don't mean to take anything away from their political accomplishment, but they were able to use a lot more creative accounting and things right. to get this done because they all agreed on what they wanted. And then the wizards of the procedure and parliamentarian figured out a way to make it hang together. So it's only the end of the president's first year, but already, um, because we are who we are as Americans, people are looking ahead to 2020, the next presidential election. Not Republicans. Republicans so much, but Democrats certainly are. And this week in Iowa, Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York City, he's going to be uh, t giving the speech to the annual holiday party there in Iowa, which is kind of a big deal. And this comes <laughs> at the same time that Gallup showed yesterday something I thought was really remarkable, that Hillary Clinton is now more unpopular than last year. Her favorability rating has fallen five percentage points since June to a new low of 36% while her unfavorable rating has hit a new high of 61 percent. So how are the Democrats going to navigate this? She may lose the 2016 election. I'm not <laughs> sure. With, number, with numbers like that, she may, she may be doing... Oh, wait. Oh, she lost. Um, Hillary Clinton Chris, doesn't can matter. can I hold you right there for yes, just a course. moment? Because Chuck Schumer is uh, giving a press conference. We're going to listen in. Breaks don't lead to job creation. They lead to big CEO salaries and money for the very, very wealthy. And finally... Senator McConnell touted the repeal of the individual mandate. That's true. And now our Republican friends will own premium increases on millions of middle class families. Most mixed to many of them, the increase they're going to have to pay in health insurance. 
All right, that was Chuck Schumer. He was giving a press conference up on uh, Capitol Hill uh, talking about the tax bill. Do we still have Chris Darwalt with us? Yes, we do. All right, so we're, I'm not, we'll leave Chuck Schumer's comments because it's pretty much the talking points they've been using all along. Um, and that's not to say that Republicans don't have talking points, too. They do. Um, I want to ask you about Iowa, though, and the fact that you have this parade of sort of New York Democrats headed there as they sort of put their toe in the water about running for president in 2020. Well, uh, Republicans certainly will have a primary. Uh, we, I would certainly expect President Trump to have a primary challenge uh, and, and maybe a robust one. Who knows? But the Democrats are looking at a field where they're going to have 15, 20, 22 candidates. They're going to have people are going to be crawling out of the woodwork because it's an open seat mm -hmm. for them. They mm -hmm. don't have a presumptive nominee by any stretch of the imagination. The and they Clinton don't really even have a message. Chris, they're wrapping me. I apologize for that. <laughs> no problem. But I'll talk to you on the podcast. It's coming up today. Thanks That's so much. All right. We'll be right back. In a live event at the White House as President Trump and Republican lawmakers celebrate the passage of their tax bill. We'll bring that to you live as soon as it happens. Meantime, the president's push for tax reform sparking a flurry of criticism from the left. Some celebrities voicing their unhappiness, including singer Bette Midler. She okay, tweets, quote, hard to believe there's not one single patriot at the IRS willing to release Trump's tax forms. This is going to cost me a lot of money, Trump claims. What a colossal fraud. Let's bring in Kyle Smith of National Review. You've been covering all sorts of uh, shenanigans from the left and in Hollywood about President Trump. And what's your take on the year as it stands? Well, uh, there's a real Trump derangement syndrome that's sort of poisoning everything in Hollywood, and they sort of can't wrap their minds around what's happened. They all donated to Hillary Clinton. They all assume she's going to win big. Uh, one of the strangest things I've seen as a critic this year, and I go to theater, I go to movies, I mm -hmm. see a lot of TV, is I show up for Julius Caesar in Central Park, and instead of Julius Caesar wearing a toga, he's, he comes out wearing a blue suit with a really long red tie, and his skin's kind of orangey, he's got like a poofy hairdo, and his followers are all wearing Make America Great Again caps. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we all know Julius Caesar is naturally the story of the rise of Donald Trump. Oh, indeed. You also mentioned to me American Horror Story, and, this, and that you said basically Trump is just infecting as you said, all of Hollywood. Take a look. It is now official. Donald Trump is the next oh, president of the United States. Since election night, it has just all been getting so much worse. <laughs> so, I mean, I try not to get too worked up or exercised about art and people can express themselves the way they want, but it does feel like a little bit over the top. Yeah, I mean, this whole series is, is about Trump derangement syndrome that sort of uh, is, is realized as it's like you're turning over the rock of American culture and like the squiggly maggots underneath are coming out to play. And uh, this show begins with this lesbian couple uh, on election night, and they're freaking out that because of Trump, they're not going to be able to stay married anymore. Nobody's going to be able to get an abortion anymore. World War III is going to mm -hmm. start. We're all going to get killed. And that's, uh, you know, kind of a satiric view. I was just talking to Greg Gutfeld about this. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very good satire of where liberal were on election night. They're all saying the handmaid's tale is going to happen. But uh, uh, they just can't get past this idea that, you know, Trump's going to be here for a while and they have to sort of do something with their anger other than make this kind of ridiculous over the top. Rosie O'Donnell uh, last night tweeted, um, how about this? You know, she basically offered $2 million to Senator Susan Collins or to Jeff Flake if they will vote no, um, that they won't be for the super rich. Um, there's been jokes about her breaking the law there because of, you can't bribe a member of Congress. But what happens to the left if, if this parade of horribles that they've expected does not materialize? Does he actually benefit from their overreaction? Well, not really, because they have the whole media on their side, and no matter how little or how normal things are, are, are happening in Washington, they're going to make it look like it's genocide, right? I mean, Ben Shapiro sent out a very funny tweet yesterday saying, uh, how is the Republican tax reform going to kill everybody when net neutrality already <laughs> killed them the day before? Right. I mean, every single thing is set your hair on fire, run around screaming your head off mm -hmm. like it's the worst thing ever and, and everyone's going to die, when in fact this tax reform means tax cuts for the vast majority of Americans. Right. If there's anything that's normal about the Republican Party, it's cutting taxes. This is not abnormal. This is not uncharted territory. This is just routine GOP stuff. And you think they'll, they'll continue to do it because they make money off of it? This is the popular way to be in Hollywood? Oh, yeah. I mean, ratings for Stephen Colbert. Stephen Colbert's show was dying. It, it was, he was about to get canceled and replaced mm -hmm. by James Corden, or maybe they're going to switch places. He was in big, big trouble doing the sort of, you know, comedy public affairs stuff. But he turned right. into full-on Trump assault. Ratings way up. Same with Saturday Night Live. 
Meanwhile, Jimmy Fallon for not making fun of Trump enough is waiting. He's kind of settled in. Right. We'll see what he does. Well, Kyle Smith, it's great to have you. I love reading your columns at National Review. I encourage everyone to follow him on Twitter as well. A congressional caravan taking Republican lawmakers. The president chalking up a major victory as we wait for Republicans to join him at the White House. The nonpartisan tax policy center estimates eight in 10 Americans will pay lower taxes next year and 5% will pay more. But a recent poll finding only 17% think they're actually getting tax cuts. Josh Holmes is a founding partner of Calvary LLC and a former chief of staff to Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. And Juan Williams is a Fox News political analyst and a co-host on The Five. Thanks for being here to you both. Let me play a clip for you this morning from the Today Show, which I think illustrates the Republicans' frustration with the perception of this bill. Here's Savannah Guthrie. Are you living in a fantasy world? I would compare that anecdote to just the surveys of businesses like the National Association of Manufacturers surveys would show the vast majority of businesses are going to do just what we say, reinvest in their workers, reinvest in their factories, pay people more money, higher wages. Me- Josh, you've been around um, the communications efforts of Republicans over the years and trying to talk about tax reform, spending and all of these things. Has this been one of the worst examples this past seven, several months about what's actually in this bill? Yeah, I mean, the media coverage of this has been so egregious, it's unbelievable, and and frankly, just belied by all the facts of what this tax relief really is. I mean, it really is middle-class tax relief with uh, important business tax relief that provides jobs and higher wages for the country, something that we've been looking for for an awful long time. But, I mean, if you look at the front pages of what we've heard over the last, you know, two, three months, you would think that this was a tax cut exclusively for the rich, that it's exclusively going to this small narrow amount of the population who's just going to sort of sit on it greedily and, and, and let the rest of the population wither. It, it could not be further from the truth. And yet here we are uh, at the end of this tax bill and all the media is saying, well, gosh, why is it so unpopular? Well, I don't mm-hmm. know. Maybe it's because that's all you've talked about for the last three there months. We see uh, up on Capitol Hill, the buses from the Senate side leaving to take the uh, Republican senators up to, Cap- uh, to the White House so that they can have the press conference uh, and speech with President Trump. Juan, what happens for Democrats if the economics don't bear out the way that they think that they will? Will they end up not having anything to run on in 2018? Exactly the opposite, Dana. I think that what you've got here is a situation where the American people are able to put in their income, literally put enter it into a computer and say, how do I come out in terms of this so-called tax cut tax reform deal? And they see they're not getting very much that what they were promised was a big tax cuts for working class, middle class Americans. And they're not the beneficiaries of most of this tax deal. As we know, 80 percent of this tax deal right now goes to the top one percent and more than that to the top zero point one percent. But if eight in 10 Americans are getting a tax cut, eight in 10 Americans aren't the one percent. So no, I, they look, get, they there's get a, a lot of numbers small percentage. But I mean, what I hear from you and Josh is a tax on the media. Everybody's misinterpreting. But you can't say that the American people are stupid. The American people elected Donald Trump and they didn't think that the press was very friendly to Trump. And now, guess what? Here comes Trump and the Republicans saying, here's a great tax deal. Merry Christmas, America. Americans know this is no Christmas deal for them. It's right, a Christmas let, deal for well, Scrooge before, and the I, rich. before I lose you, Josh, I, I know that you, you, you said it with your eyes. Um, <laughs> let me ask you something, Josh, which is um, Steve Bannon, sort of the nemesis of Mitch McConnell, has said that he wanted to primary all the Senate Republican incumbents um, that were up for election in 2018 because they're not supporting President Trump's agenda. And yet here you have a victory lap happening at the White House, celebrating not just the tax reform piece, but ANWR, of all things, and also the uh, repeal of the individual mandate. Does Steve Bannon still have a point to make that Republicans aren't supporting President Trump? No, I mean, he's got no point at all. I think this underscores the idiocy of Steve Bannon's entire project here. Basically, it's a vanity project to promote Steve Bannon. If you want to look at who's supporting President Trump's agenda and who's trying to accomplish conservative ideals that we've really been working on for three decades, it's the Republican Congress, it's Mitch McConnell, it's Speaker Ryan, it's President Trump working in tandem with rank and file Republicans to get big ticket items done. I mean, this is a big day for the Republican Party and a big day for America Mm -hmm. with these results. Juan, do you think it's better if Republicans look like they are more divided? If you're a Democrat, do you want the Republicans to look like they're uh, in, you know, having problems? Or 
is it better to say look at them as a whole, as a group, so you can't take anybody away? Well, I don't. Th I mean, I, from the Democrats' perspective, Dana, this is, you know, for for the Democrats, they're going to associate anybody who's r running on the GOP ticket with Donald Trump and yeah. his tax cut deal. So they see it as a whole. But I must say, I agree with Josh on this. I just think that. Bannon's got his own agenda. I'm not sure it's the Republican, certainly not Mitch McConnell or Paul Ryan's agenda. Well, and I think that I guess the question I was asking is, is it is it supportive of President Trump's agenda if this was actually what he wanted and he ended up getting what he wanted? Yeah, I mean, if you look, if you want proof of that, right, while Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell were working away to try to deliver the results mm -hmm. of today, Steve Bannon was working to try to get an alleged child molester as the nominee for the, for the <laughs> Republican Party in Alabama. So, you know, I'll let everybody draw their own conclusions on how effective those two versions of reality are. All right, I'll let you have the last word it. there, Josh. I didn't say it, Dana. I know you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Juan. Holmes, Juan Williams, I'll see you in a couple of hours on The Five. Thank Thanks so much. Thanks. Republican senators on the way to the White House for the president's news conference to celebrate passing the GOP tax bill. Peter Ducey is on Capitol Hill where the buses, they're standing by, Peter. And Dana, we've spent the last couple of months talking about problems within the Republican Party. They've had these majorities and the warring factions within the GOP have not really been able to capitalize uh, on the strength of their numbers. But they all just loaded onto a bus together, and that goes to show that this tax cut bill is something that all different kinds of Republican lawmakers, the most conservative, the most moderate, uh, save for a handful from uh, New York, New Jersey, and California, uh, are all trying to celebrate. They all want to be there in the photo op with President Trump. We were watching here in front of the Senate. Uh, we just saw the three buses carrying the Republican senators go on down Pennsylvania Avenue and a few minutes ago the last bus with some stragglers from the house who did not get there in time for the first wave of buses all headed down so we should expect to see them all smiling with the president who we heard earlier is very Those stragglers excited about this are not well. going to get the best seat at the White House Peter Ducey, thank you so no, much. No, they're not. No, they're not. <laughs> Appreciate yep. it so much. We'll, t we'll be back in touch with you uh, as the president gets ready to give that speech at 3 o'clock. So Congress passing tax reform, and now it's headed to the president. What does this mean for the GOP, the Democrats, and the American people? Stock market is up. Optimism is high. Coupled with this uh, tax reform, America is ready to start performing as it should have for a number of years. Hey, Shepard Smith on the Fox News deck. President Trump set to speak at the top of the hour. The White House calling it a celebration of Republicans passing their tax plan. It is no doubt the biggest change to our nation's tax code in 30 years. And obviously, not everybody is celebrating. We'll have the president's remarks and reaction from both sides of the political aisle and details on what it means for your money. That's all ahead. Top of the hour on Shepard Smith reporting. We'll see you then. As my friend Shep just said, the president's set to speak soon at the White House. But joining me now is Colorado Senator Cory Gardner, who chairs the National Republican Senatorial Committee. Um, first of all, I should offer you congratulations. This is something that I imagine as the chair, you were hoping that you had something to go home with for the holidays to be able to tell Republican constituents we were able to get something done. Look, we said to the voters that we would grow the economy, that we would uh, to cut taxes, cut regulations. That's exactly what we've done. That law will be signed in the next couple of days by the president. And certainly uh, good news to the American people who will be able to keep more of their own money in their pockets. Do you think uh, do you think that there's any vulnerability for Republicans into what Democrats are saying? And their messages were, were very effective in Alabama and Virginia in those special elections this year for Democratic turnout. And they're saying that this bill is just a giveaway to the rich. You know, all the talking points that they have. But is there some concern about turnout for Republicans in the 2018 midterms based on those two special elections? Well, for those people who opposed the legislation thinking that it would only benefit uh, the rich, uh, tell that to the 200,000 AT&T employees who today are going to get a $1,000 bonus because of the tax relief bill. That's what they just announced. Tell that to the charity that Boeing is going to donate $300 million to because of the tax relief bill. Yeah. We're, tell that to uh, the, the infrastructure that is already being announced in terms of increases in capital expenditures because of the tax relief bill. We're seeing businesses already today announce that they're spending 
spending money in the United States. They're giving money back to employees in the form of bonuses. We'll see it in salaries and wages next year. Uh, this is an incredible opportunity for hardworking families across Colorado and in this country. And so uh, for people who voted against this bill, when, when August, September, October of next year comes around, uh, they're going to be looking at uh, why people are better off than they were, and they had nothing to do with it. In fact, they opposed people keeping their own money. So, th so that brings me to a, a couple of questions. So if you think about up in North Dakota, Heidi Heidkamp was one of the senators, rep Democrats, that people thought maybe she will end up voting for tax reform. She did not. Um, and yet, I, I don't know if there is a Republican challenger there for her yet in 2018. Are you working on that? Yeah. Well, you know, you've got a state senator in the race right now, Tom Campbell. You've got uh, Kevin Kramer, a House member who continues to look at the race. Mm -hmm. uh, and look, uh, if you look at somebody like Kevin Kramer, his polling number is consistently ahead. He wins that race today if the race were held. So uh, I think uh, we have opportunities in North Dakota. There's opportunities in Missouri. Uh, there's opportunities across this country by, uh, th that are given to Republicans because people believe that this agenda has helped them. It's made them better off uh, that we're remembering the forgotten men and women across this country by relieving taxes, by eliminating regulations by uh, being focused on uh, the people who live in our communities, not just the people on Wall Street or Hollywood. Senator, we're looking at a live look at the south lawn of the White House where President Trump is going to join with other Republicans for this victory lap on, on tax reform. It looks kind of like a Colorado day. It's sunny and beautiful there. Um, well, it's always in sunny Washington. in Colorado. That's right. Uh, well, we certainly know that, and I've got the sun damage to prove it. Um, <laughs> I want to ask you, though, about this poll. NBC Wall Street Journal poll shows that on the generic ballot, voters say that they prefer for the 2018 midterms uh, Democrats to Republicans at 50 to 39 percent. And, and those like uh, Harry Enten over at The New York Times who look at the generic ballot say that you know, this spells some really big headwinds for Republicans. So I know that factors into your thinking. How do you expect outside groups maybe to help you with a push in order to try to change those numbers a little bit and prevent a wave election? Well, if you look at states uh, in the Senate like Missouri, like Indiana, like North Dakota, like West Virginia, like Florida, Montana, and so many other states, our candidates are, are ahead. Our candidates are in the race. They're winning. This isn't a generic ballot performance for them. They're actually winning races across the country today. And they'll continue to win races by us fulfilling our promises, by making sure the American people know that they're better off with the agenda that we've been able to implement and that we will continue to implement with judges who will be guardians of the Constitution. And what you're going to hear is Democrats over the next several months who opposed the tax relief say that they want to increase taxes. They want to bring taxes mm. back. In fact, Bernie Sanders this past weekend said that he wants to claw back the tax cuts. Look, Walter Mondale, they haven't campaigned. I haven't seen anybody campaign so hard for tax increases since Walter Mondale lost 49 out of 50 Yeah, states. we all know how that turned out. That's right. <laughs> Let me ask you something that's important, I know, to Colorado, and you've talked about it, and I guess it's going to be punted into January. How do you see the president and the Congress coming to some sort of agreement? Yeah. What would it look like for the, these dreamers and the DACA bill? Look, I think it's very important that we have a bipartisan solution. And I don't just mean, you know, 10 Republicans and, uh, you know, 50 Democrats. I'm talking about a significant number of people on both sides of the aisle who recognize that we're going to find a solution uh, for children who, at a very young age, through no fault of their own, were brought into this country. Uh, you know, we don't charge a three-year-old for walking across the neighbor's lawn with a felony trespass. Uh, we find a w that's just not what we do. So we're going to find a solution. Uh, there's so many uh, kids that go to school with my daughter who this is the only country they've ever known, at least that they've only remembered because they came here at such a very young age. So uh, I think that working with the White House, Republicans and Democrats can come up with a solution that this country will be proud of. But more importantly, it'll be a solution that will begin to fix our broken immigration process. If we do that, I think it's a solution all Americans can be proud of. All right. Cory Gardner, thank you so much. Thanks. Senator from Colorado. We'll be back thank in you. touch with you as the year goes on. All right. A Fox News alert. The recount for a Virginia House race ends with a razor-thin margin of victory for one candidate and calls of foul play by the other. Three-term incumbent Republican delegate David Yancey challenging the results over a vote not counted, a vote not counted, during the recount process. This after officials declared his challenger, Democratic candidate Shelley Simons, the winner by just one vote. But judges that awarded that vote to the Republican, which means controls of the Virginia House would be split 50-50, and both parties would have to broker a very rare power-sharing agreement. A major achievement for President Trump and Republicans in Congress with tax reform now a done deal, and lawmakers are gathering at the White House there for an event to mark the occasion. We will take you there live once it begins.
Plus, what does tax reform mean for Wall Street's record rally? A look at the numbers so far following the big announcement. On April 